The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Sam Thompson and his wife Sarah lived in a small cabin on the Klondike River where Sam had staked a claim. The years in the North Country had not been easy, and the faces of the two old people looked weather-beaten and careworn. But nevertheless, Sarah's voice was cheerful, and she smiled as Chief, their big white Siberian dog, made himself comfortable at Sam's feet as he sat before the stove after supper. Oh, I declare, I never saw a dog more devoted to anybody than Chief is to you, Sam. He sticks to you like a cocklebur to a firm mitten. <laughs> yes, I guess he's one thing as faithful to me as you are, Sarah. Lots of women getting on to 60 would like a softer life. Living up here without any conveniences and no neighbors to gossip with. Well, lots of women would be beating me over the head with a rolling pin by this time. Sam, you ain't hinting that you want to give up the claim, are you? Well, we're not getting much more than a living out of it. Sometimes I wonder if it's worth it. Now, Sam, don't you go getting discouraged. There's gold on this claim, and I ain't giving up so easy. Well, I wish I'd known a little more about mining when I came up here. Could have saved a lot of time. Sam, uh, I did something today without asking you about it uh -huh. first. I was going to have it kind of a surprise to you if it worked out all right, but uh, maybe I'd better talk it over with well, you. Well, what is it? Pete is graduating from college where he studied mining. You mean that nephew of yours graduating mm -hmm. already? <laughs> well, I can't believe it. It seems to me, why, he was just a tow-headed kid when we last saw him. Well, he was, but that's a long time ago. Anyway, I wrote him a letter today and told him we'd like to have him come up here with us. Oh, but Sarah, do you think that's wise? It's a long way from the States. And my claim isn't paying well, much, There's so... no reason a young man like him shouldn't come. This country will make a real he-man of him. And maybe he could help us. Of course, the letter's still here. I don't have to mail it if you object. Well, it would be nice to have Pete here. He's young, full of life. You think he'd come, Sarah? Go ahead and send the letter. It's pretty near time for Sergeant Preston's patrol through here. I thought he could take the letter to Dawson for us. Good idea. Well, that ends what I was leading up to. Well, what was that? It's trading post today. Jake Smith made me an offer for my claim. And you were thinking of selling? Well, I told him I'd try you out. If you indicated that you wanted to get out of here, I'd consider his offer. Jake Smith had been interested in this property for a long time. Yeah. He must think it's worth something. No, he just knows that it pays off pretty steady. I think he kind of has his eye on this cabin of ours. You've made it look so homey with curtains and these rag rugs and everything. Yes, I think it's the cabin he'd like as much as anything. At the same time that Sam and Sarah were talking about Jake Smith's offer for their claim... Jake himself was discussing it with his partner, Zeke Benson, in their cabin not far away. But it was not Sam's cabin that interested him. I tell you, Zeke, I know there must be a gold pocket on Sam's claim. He's just too dumb to find it, that's all. Yeah, well, now that you made him the offer, you'll probably start looking. <laughs> I was too smart for that. I kept hinting that I liked their cabin because Sarah fixed it up so pretty. Hmm. He knew I'd watched him panning gold and the claim is paying enough to want to buy it. Well, what makes you so sure there's a gold vein there? Downstream from Sam's place, the nuggets he pans are pretty good size. When he wasn't around yesterday, I tried panning upstream on the other side of his claim. And it wasn't even worth the effort. Now, Sam don't know how to find a vein of gold. It, it takes a know-how and patience. Now, what do you say? Will you go in on this with me? Well, uh, if you can get Sam to sell for a reasonable price... I'll throw in with you. It may be our chance to make a fortune. 
A few days had passed before Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police stopped at the Thompson's cabin on his regular patrol. King, his big gray lead dog, followed him to the cabin door. <laughs> All right, King, come along. The Thompsons like dogs. Sergeant Preston, come on in. Hello, Sarah. All right if I bring King in with me? Of course. Come on, King. <laughs> We're always glad to see King. Sam, here's Sergeant Preston. Why, hello, Sergeant. How are you, Sam? Uh, take off your park and have a chair next to the stove. Thanks. Hello there, King. <laughs> Lie down, King. You know, it's a good thing that he and Chief like each other. I'd like to have Chief for my dog team. So powerful and intelligent, <coughs> he'd make a fine sled dog. Well, if I ever gave him to anybody, it would be you, Sergeant. But I doubt that you'll ever get him. I'd take Chief along, I think, if I ever left the North Country. There's uh, no danger of you doing that, is there, Sam? He was actually thinking of it the other day. Oh. Jake Smith is trying to buy our claim, but I wouldn't hear of it. Oh, I thought Jake had a claim. Well, not a very good one. Oh, and by the way, Sergeant, if you happen to see him at the trading post when you go by there today, I wish you'd tell him for me that the deal is off. Sarah refuses to leave the Yukon. Glad to hear that. I'd certainly hate to have you two leave. You're two of the best friends I have. Oh, I like this country. I don't think I'll ever want to leave it. Oh, you're a wonderful woman, Sarah. Oh, go on with you. <laughs> oh, and while I think of it, Sergeant, I have a letter ready to be mailed. Thought maybe you'd take it into Dawson for me. Be glad to do it. It's to my nephew back in the States. So we're asking him to come up here and live with us. Winter had closed down on the Yukon Territory, and Sam Thompson had joined Jake Smith to hunt game and replenish their meat supply. The big white dog chief had run far ahead of Sam and Jake as a snowshoe rabbit darted across his path. <laughs> If Chief catches that rabbit, I won't have to worry about feeding him today. He was a big fella. Uh, I'm tired out already. I don't see how you're standing. I'm a lot younger than you are. Well, I enjoy hunting. Maybe that's why it doesn't tire me. Uh, uh, the mountains sure look pretty today, don't they? Well, they're dangerous this time of year. You never know when a bunch of rock and snow is going to come rolling down. I don't see why you and Sarah like this country so much. Now, Jake, if you're going to start asking me to sell you my claim, you might as well save your breath. I told you no a long time ago. Well, I didn't say anything about your claim, did I? It just seems that... Sam, did you hear something? Huh? Sounded like thunder. Sam, look out! It's an avalanche! Run! A Hurry. huge mass of rock and snow was hurtling down the side of the mountain. Sam looked about for Chief, then turned quickly to follow Jake. But his foot caught on a branch covered with snow and he sprawled on the ground. Jake! Jake! Ah! In the meantime, Sergeant Preston had arrived at the Thompson cabin. He sat beside the big stove with King at his side while Sarah read a letter he had brought. It's from Pete, Sergeant. He's coming up here. Oh, fine, Sarah. Did he say when he was leaving? He'll be here in a few weeks. Oh, I can't wait to see him. I wish Sam would get home so I could read this letter to him. You're staying to have supper with us, aren't you, Sergeant? Why? Uh... Sam ought to be here soon now. It's almost dark. Thanks, Sarah. I'll be glad to stay. Oh, I guess that's Sam coming now. I heard Chief bark. Go ahead, King. That's funny. Chief is scratching on the door. Yes. I wonder where Sam is. Come in, Chief. Come in. What's wrong, boy? What's the matter, Sarah? Isn't Sam there? There's no sign of him. Look at Chief. He just stands there barking and keeps running away from the cabin and looking back. Well, something must have happened to Sam. Was anyone with him? He said he was going to stop and get Jake Smith to go hunting with him. I'd better follow Chief. He wouldn't leave, Sam, unless something had happened to him. Now, don't worry, Sarah. King and I will find him. Chief raced ahead of the Mounties dog team toward the pile of rocks and rubble at the foot of the mountain. There, the big dog stopped, barked frantically, and began to dig into the snow. 
Sergeant Preston worked with a spade beside him and soon found what he was looking for. There he is. Now get hold of him. Sam. Sam. I'm afraid it's no use, Chief. We might have saved him if we'd been here when it happened. Poor Sam. He's dead. While Sergeant Preston took the lifeless body of Sam back to his cabin, Jake Smith paced the floor of his cabin nervously as he talked to his partner, Zeke. It must have killed Sam. I couldn't even see him when it was over. Now, what are you worried about? You couldn't stop the avalanche. I should have gone back and tried to dig him out, I guess. I might have saved his life. Yeah, he was probably dead the minute he fell. And anyway, who's going to find out you didn't go back? I am the only one who knew you went with him. It was just the thought of getting his claim that kept me from trying to dig him out. I, I just couldn't go back. Yeah, well, now maybe Sarah will sell it to us. She can't work it herself, that's sure. <laughs> That avalanche was a lucky break for us. When Sam doesn't come home, Sarah may come to get us to look for him. Now, you be sure and tell her I was with you all day. Listen, you told me to say that six times already. I know what to tell her. I don't see why you're so worried about it. You didn't start the avalanche. It, it was almost like killing him, not, not going back to hell. Oh, forget it. Now, we'll spend half the night pretending to look for him when Sarah comes for us. That'll convince her. Uh, Zeke, listen. Do you hear dogs? Yeah. Hey, that sounds like Preston the Mountie. Hey, maybe he's looking for Sam. Remember, Zeke, I was with you all day. Yeah, sure. Hello, Zeke. Jake here? Uh, yes, uh, he's here. Uh, come on in. Thanks. Hello, Sergeant. Have a chair. I'm certainly glad you're here, Jake. I thought you'd gone hunting with Sam Thompson. He was killed by an avalanche this afternoon. What? Killed? Well, how did you find him? We wouldn't have found him if it hadn't been for his dog, Chief. Somehow, Chief missed being caught in the avalanche and came back to Sarah for help. I was there at the cabin, and he led me to the place where Sam was buried. Gosh, that's terrible. Well, it was a lucky thing for you. You didn't go hunting with him the way you planned. I guess we better go over and see what we can do for Sarah. Yeah, I guess we better. Uh, perhaps we'd better wait until tomorrow, boys. There's been a bad shock for her. Now, if you boys could build a coffin for Sam tonight, it would be a big help. Oh, sure, we'll be glad to. Why, Sam was one of our best friends. We'll take it over tomorrow, and Jake and I'll dig his grave. Why, it's the least we can do. Thanks, boys. That takes a load off my mind. I'll see you at Sam's tomorrow. <laughs> this is work. Digging a grave in this frozen ground ain't exactly easy. And don't you think it's deep enough? No, we, we got to go deeper than this. The branch of this spruce tree makes it harder to dig. Well, Sarah insisted that we dig it here beside the creek under this tree. I don't care where we dig it, just as long as she'll be reasonable about selling this claim to us. Can't see any reason why she won't do it now. But well, come on, let's finish this. I'm getting cold. Yeah. <laughs> We better wait until after we bury Sam before we... Hey, Jake. Hold it a minute. What's the matter? Hey, look at this. Look what I just dug up. What? This looks like pay dirt. It looks like it. Why, it is. Jake, we've hit that gold pocket. This is it. Why, there's a rich vein of gold running right through this grave. Well, I'll be... What are we going to do? If Sarah finds out, she'll never sell now. Don't say a word about this. We'll cover this dirt with branches until we bury Sam. Sarah won't want to stay up here without Sam, and we can buy the claim cheap if we're careful. She'll go back to the States and never even find out about it. Yeah, we got to be careful with Sergeant Preston around. And we'll keep this dirt covered, like I said. Uh -huh. You'll never see it, especially when he doesn't suspect anything. Yay! Yay! Oh, there's Sarah now. Yes, Sarah? I've got some hot tea ready for you. Uh, we'll be right in. Thanks. Hey, don't you think we could sign her out a little about buying the claim? Oh, maybe. <coughs> I'd better do most of the talking. Yeah, that suits me fine. I think if we could just sort of suggest the idea to her, or maybe she'll make us an offer. Now you let me handle it. Just sit down at the table, boys. The tea's all ready. Oh, thanks, sir. 
Well, it's nice of you to do this with all your trouble. Well, it's nice of you to, to do what you're doing. Here's your tea. Oh, thanks. Sam looks as if he's asleep lying there. Yes, don't he, though? But it near breaks my heart to watch Chief, that dog of his. Look at him. He didn't even move when he came in. He's been lying there beside that coffin all morning. He's never left Sam's side since Sergeant Preston brought him back here. He's a good-looking dog. I bet he'd make a fine sled dog. Uh, you going to keep him, sir? Keep Chief? <laughs> well, I should say I am. He loves Sam so. It would be like giving up a part of Sam if I got rid of Chief. Well, I just thought maybe you'd be planning to go back to the States now and wouldn't want to take a dog like him back there. You mean you thought I'd leave here? Well, you, you can't work Sam's claim all alone. It's hardly the place for a woman way out here by yourself. Well, didn't Sam tell you about our nephew coming up here? Your nephew? He's on his way now. He's been to college and studied mining. I couldn't leave now, even if I wanted to, because I wrote him and asked him to come. Oh. Uh, when is he getting here? He ought to be here in a couple of weeks. Are you going to stay out here all alone until he gets here? No, I think I'll go in and stay in Dawson with Mrs. Raymond. It'll keep me from getting too lonesome. That was what Sergeant Preston suggested. He's in town now making arrangements. Well, maybe your nephew won't like it up here. I should think you'd rather get out of this country. It's so cold and rough. But I've come to love it. I want to stay here all my life now. And be buried beside Sam under the spruce tree there, near the river. This is my home, and I'm going to stay here. The day after Sam was buried, Sergeant Preston had arrived to take Sarah into Dawson. Her baggage was strapped to the sled, and she was ready to lock the cabin. Well, I guess I'm ready now, Sergeant. The only thing left to do is get Chief. Poor fellow, it's going to be hard getting him away from Sam's grave. He's been there all night and all morning. Almost breaks my heart to look at him. I had to take his breakfast out there this morning. He wouldn't come in, and he hardly ate a thing. He's grieving, Sarah. I think he'll be all right when my nephew gets here. Maybe when he's been in town for a while with me, it'll help. You may have trouble keeping him there. Are you going to be around here for the next few days, Sergeant? Why, uh... I have to go north for three or four days. I'm starting today after I take you to Dawson. If you have any trouble with Chief, I'll take him for a while when I get back. Perhaps if he runs with my team for a while, it'll do him good. Here's his leash, Sergeant. Oh, uh, he'll come with us, I'm sure. He knows King and me. But you'd better keep him right in the cabin with you in Dawson until he gets used to being away from home. I'll give you the key to the cabin, Sergeant, in case you want to use it while I'm gone. Well, I... Guess we're ready. I can't tell you how grateful I am to you and Jake and Zeke for all you've done. Jake and Zeke waited until the following day before going back to Sam's grave. As they approached the lonely cabin far from the trail, Zeke looked about cautiously. You sure that Sarah left and won't be back for a couple of weeks? Of course I'm sure. Sergeant Preston took her yesterday. As long as she won't sell us a claim, this is the only way we can do it. We can clean that gold pocket out before she gets back and she'll never know it was there. Don't you think it's kind of risky working out here in daylight? What if someone happens to come by? This place is so far off the trail, there's no danger of anyone seeing us. We'll have to be careful how we do it anyway. We can take the gold with us as we dig it out every day. And always cover the grave with branches to hide what we're doing. The yeah, first thing we have to do is dig another grave and move that coffin out of there. We'd better bury it up there on the slope behind that bunch of trees so nobody can see it. Hey, Jake, look. Look over there at Sam's grave. Oh, there's Sam's dog. What? Well, how did he get back here? Preston and Sarah took him to Dawson yesterday. He must have run away. Well, he's lying on Sam's grave. And I'll bet we'll have one heck of a time getting him off. Well, come on. Let's see what he does. Maybe we'll have to shoot him. He's not going to let us come near it. You never liked me for some reason or other. Hey, I'm not going any closer. He'll take a leg off us. Yeah, you're right. We're going to have to shoot him. In a way, it's too bad. He'd bring a lot of money if we could sell him to somebody. Hey, Zeke, 
That man we met in the trading post yesterday. The one that's going north and one of his dogs went lame. He said he'd pay over $100 for a good dog if he didn't have to go back to Dawson to get it. Mm. Jackson was his name, wasn't it? Yeah. He said he was going to Eagle City and on into Alaska. He won't be back this way. Hmm. He could use some extra money for equipment. You think you could handle that dog? Get him muzzled or something? Of course I can handle it. You go on over and get Jackson. By the time he gets back, I'll have this cur roped and muzzled. And when Jackson gets him hitched to the sled with the rest of the team, he'll be all right. <laughs> there won't be much he can do about it. Jackson wanted to start out today. Now you'll be able to do it. I'll get back here with him just as soon as I can. Now remember now, this is where we live. Don't tell Jackson anything different. I'll be too busy getting that dog hitched to tell him anything. I'll let you do the talking as usual. The big white dog chief went with Ned Jackson unwillingly. But hitched to the dog team, there was nothing he could do. That night, however, Ned camped on the trail, and when everything was quiet, the big dog tried desperately to get free. Toward morning, his efforts were rewarded, and quietly he left the camp and headed for home. It was later in the morning that Sergeant Preston, on the way back to Dawson, stopped his team at Ned Jackson's camp beside the trail. Working. Good morning. Hello. I'm Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. How are you, Sergeant? I'm Ned Jackson. You, uh, just breaking camp? I'd like to break camp. I'm on the way north, but I've just had some bad luck. Oh? Anything I can do to help you? I just lost one of the best sled dogs I ever had. He chewed himself loose last night and got away. I don't see how I can get along without him. I'm carrying a heavy load. Well, maybe I can help you find him. I doubt it. The trouble is that big gray dog over there cut his foot yesterday, so he won't work either. Oh. Well, I guess I'll have to stay right here until he's better. Well, what the dog that ran away look like? He was a big white one. I just bought him yesterday, paid $150 for him, too. Did you buy him in Dawson? No, I got him at a place about 10 miles out of Dawson. Two men sold him to me. They lived in a cabin on the river. I had a hard time with him. He didn't want to leave home at all. You say he was a big white dog? Yeah. What was his name? Well, I heard one of the men call him Chief. I think that was his name, all right. I sure hate to lose that animal. He was right in his prime, a beautiful dog. Now, who were these men who sold him to you? I don't know their last names. I just happened to meet him in the trading post the day before and told him I needed a dog. One of them was called uh, Jake and the other one uh, Zeke, I think. I'm afraid the men who sold you that dog had no right to do it. I know they didn't own him. You mean they stole him? I can't understand why they'd do such a thing. Maybe we're not talking about the same dog at all. Lots of dogs are named Chief. You know, that's a common name for a sled dog. Uh, too many things checked. Jackson, if you can spare the time to go back with me, I think we can find the men who sold you this dog and get your money back. Well, I can't go on without a dog team that's strong enough. I'll have to go back anyway, I guess. I think we can find Chief for you. I'm sure you won't have any trouble identifying him as the dog that was sold to you. Well, how are you going to find him? Well, my dog, King, can trail him. Now, if you'll show me where Chief was tied last night, we won't have any trouble. If those men sold me a stolen dog, I'd like to get my hands on them. We'll find them. Don't worry. You're not half as anxious to find out about this as I am. Sergeant Preston's great dog, King, had no difficulty trailing Chief back to Sarah's cabin. They traveled steadily through the night, their trail lighted by a bright moon. The late winter daylight had not broken when they turned into the clearing behind Sarah's cabin. Okay. Oh, you have to oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. This is the place I got that dog, Sergeant. I don't see any sign of him, though. I thought we'd find him here under this tree. This is where his master's buried. But he's gone. Chief! Here, Chief! Where are you, boy? All right, King. Find Chief, boy. You let us this far. Find him. Going over behind that clump of trees on the slope. Well, that's funny. Wonder why Chief would go there. Your dog found him, all right. Here he is. Chief, old fellow, what are you doing over here? He knows you, all right. He's wagging his tail. Oh, Chief and I are old friends. Well, this is odd. The ground here has been disturbed. And Chief won't leave it. Why would he be lying here if his master's buried over there near the river? Can't understand it. Unless. Jackson. Get a lantern off my sled, will you? I'm going to look under those branches where we buried Sam. You think maybe they moved the coffin or something? It's the only reason Chief would lie there like that. Get the lantern while I move these branches, will you? 
Here's the lantern. I'll light it. We were right about the coffin. It's been moved. Nothing here but a deep hole. But why would anyone move it? Bad enough to dig one grave in weather like this with the ground all frozen. Now, yeah, get down here. Now, hand me that lantern, Jackson. Yeah, here you are. Thanks. Gosh, that's a mighty big grave they dug. Someone's been doing a lot of digging here since Sam's coffin was taken out. It's a good deal wider. And, oh. Now I see. What is it? Jake and Zeke discovered a gold pocket here. They were trying to steal all they could out of it while Sarah was away. What? Here, look at this. But you're right, it's gold. So that's why they got rid of Chief. Chief wouldn't let him near the grave, I suppose. Well, we've got work to do before morning, Jackson. Give me a hand out of here, would you? There you are. Now we'll cover this with branches again, just the way it was when we found it. Then, Jackson, we'll get the dog teams out of sight and cover our tracks. We'll wait in the cabin until daylight... I think we'll catch our grave robbers just as soon as it is daylight. Jake and Zeke turned into the clearing and made for the spruce-covered grave just as dawn was lighting the eastern sky. I hope we do as well today as we did yesterday. We made a nice haul. Yeah, that gold pocket is bigger than we thought it was. If we want to get all of it, though, we'll have to work fast. Hey. Does it look to you as if somebody's been fooling around here? Hmm? The snow on this side, it looks messed up. Oh, I don't think... Hey, Drake. What's the matter? Look over there where we buried Sam. Isn't that Chief? Huh? It sure is. He found out where we buried him. He must have run away from Jackson. We should have shot him. Jackson may come looking for him. Well, it ain't too late to shoot him now. Come on, we'll take care of that right away. This gun will take care of him. Jake is Preston. Shoot him quick. I'll get him. Jake leveled the rifle at Sergeant Preston, but before he could pull the trigger, King sprang at him. As the gun went off, the shot whistled harmlessly over the sergeant's head while the man and dog sprawled in the snow. Get away from me, you cutter. Stop him. Get up. Back, King. Let him up, fella. Sergeant, that dog moved like lightning. I never saw anything like that. I guess Jake lost his head for a minute. I thought he'd know better than to try to shoot me with King around. Preston, I, I didn't realize it was All you. All right, Jake, don't make it worse. You and Zeke are under arrest. Those are the men who sold me the dog, Sergeant. Oh, we don't know what he's talking about. We didn't sell the dog. Oh, yes, you did. We trailed Chief back here from Ned Jackson's camp. King doesn't make mistakes like that. Chief was the dog you sold him. Well, we we didn't think Sarah wanted him. We, we were going to give her the money. Uh, yeah. That's what we were going to do. Well, you can give me the money back instead. That's not all you're going to give back. You're going to give Sarah every bit of gold you took from the spot where Sam was buried. I'll get together so I can handcuff you. All right. You two are going back to Dawson with me. Watch them, King. Yes, King. The case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, the copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Saturday night dull, not on your life if you keep company with ABC. We've a lineup of shows to keep you entertained from early in the evening until it's time to go out and get the Sunday morning papers. For mystery a la mode, Ross Dolan Detective is on hand Saturday nights. And when Ross seeks to solve a crime, it means 30 minutes of solid action and suspense. Speaking of suspense, wait till you hear famous jury trials, the stirring courtroom program that dramatizes typical American jury trials. Then there's gangbusters with true crime cases straight from police files all over the country. Murder and Mr. Malone is another tense mystery that's bound to keep you sitting on the edge of your chair as that famous criminal lawyer, John J. Malone, tackles a case of murder. For smashing thrills from early to late Saturday nights, be sure to listen when these great...